Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. Now recently I did a review on the PC Engine Mini. Personally, really love it. And I've had the TurboGrafx-16 in my possession for a little while now, but I wanted to wait until it was officially available in the US to do an unboxing. And now that you can pick up the TG-16 Mini on Amazon for around $99, I think it's time to get this out of the box and see how it performs. So here we have it, the TurboGrafx-16 Mini comes preloaded with 57 games. Yes, there are some hidden games in here, and we'll go over the full list in just a second. At $99, I personally think that this is well worth it if you're going to play the games or you like collecting the mini consoles. I purchased the PC Engine Mini about a month and a half ago on Amazon Japan. I did a full review on it. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. But overall, I have had an absolute blast with the PC Engine Mini, and I'm sure that the TG-16 is going to be no different. So inside of the box, you're going to receive the user manual. You'll also receive a single controller, and with the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, you're going to get the Turbo Pad. It does have turbo functionality built in. We have three settings here, just like on the original controller. And they have done a bang-up job on these controllers with all three of the systems they released. The PC Engine Mini, the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, and the Core Graphics Unit. The controllers are spot on and they feel just like the original. These consoles do not come with a power adapter, but a 1 amp 5 volt phone charger will work. It comes with a micro USB cable. We also have HDMI in the bottom and the console itself. Now this is the biggest mini console that's been released so far. I mean, it is absolutely huge, and I know there's a lot of wasted space in here, but they had to get the TurboGrafx-16 design right, and it looks amazing. It even has the detachable expansion on the back. It'll cover up your wires when you plug everything in. So real quick, we'll just take a look at the size of this thing. We have the TurboGrafx-16 Mini on the left-hand side and the PC Engine Mini on the right-hand side. I also wanted to throw in the NES Classic and the PlayStation Classic just to give you a look here. And as you can see, the TG-16 Mini is actually not that mini. But either way, I'm still digging this thing. Definitely looks like the original TurboGrafx-16. On the front here, we have two USB ports for our controllers, and we have a power switch. There is no external LEDs whatsoever on this unit. Around back, like I mentioned, we have that expansion port that can be removed, and inside of here, we'll have our HDMI port and our micro USB for power. And when it's all wired up and assembled, it actually looks pretty good. We have the HDMI going in and our micro USB to power the unit. So now I want to go ahead and power this thing up for the first time. We're going to take a look at the interface, some of the settings, and we'll go over some gameplay. All right, so upon first boot, you'll be prompted to choose your language, and I just want to give you a listen here. This music is absolutely amazing. We'll go to English here. And just like the PC Engine, we have that beautiful interface here. They've done an amazing job with this. I said it in my last video. This is definitely my favorite interface from these mini consoles that have been released in the last couple years. We got the little PC Engines rolling around in the background here. And this is the TurboGrafx-16 section. So all of our TurboGrafx-16 games will be right here. But if we want to swap out, we can select Console. And this is going to bring us over to the Core Graphics. So here's the core graphics games. And we also have a section for PC Engine games. But we need to go into Settings, Menu Design, PC Engine, and we'll return to Menu. And now that core graphics has turned into the PC Engine design. And we do have a few different games here. So if we swap back, it'll bring us back to the TurboGrafx-16. And there's lots of great stuff in here. One thing that I'm really excited about messing around with is the Turbo function on this controller. It wasn't included with the PC Engine, and this is definitely going to help out with some games that I really like to play here. So let's head down to the settings. We have User Manual, Language, Display Settings, and we're going to head over here. We can change the aspect ratio from here, and I'm going to leave it at 4x3, the first option here, but you can go widescreen, and we also have the Turbo Express option. Personally, I'm not going to be using this, but it's a cool little feature that they threw in here. I don't think a lot of people will use this because it makes the screen a lot smaller. But I'd say stick with 4x3 if you really want these to look like the original. Next up, we have wallpaper. We have a few to choose from here. And personally, I'm very partial to the very first one. But if you don't want anything in the background, you can set it to black. So you have nothing distracting you in the background, especially if you're using a 4x3 aspect ratio. This will be very visible on the sides. And I'm sure when the hack is complete for this, there will be more wallpapers. 
We have menu design. We've already went over that. So yeah, overall, really love the design. Lots of great games. And I kind of want to go over those right now because there's just a lot of stuff in here. Mentioned the US version of the TurboGrafx-16 has 57 games that are accessible from the menus. There are a few secret games built in. I'm not going to go over that in this video. But I have pulled up a Wikipedia article just giving us an idea of what's on the Core Graphics, the PC Engine, and the TurboGrafx-16. I'll leave a link to this in the description so you can see what's omitted. But we have Air Zonk, Al Dines, Alien Crush, Gate Ball, Blazing Lasers, Bomberman 93, Bomberman 94, Bomberman, Panic Bomber, Bonk's Adventure, Bonk's Revenge, Kadash, Castlevania, Rondo of Blood, Chu Man Fu, China Warrior, Choaniki, Dragon Spirit, Dungeon Explorer, Fantasy Zone, Galaga 88, The Genji and the Heke Clans, Ghouls and Ghost, King of Fukai, Dusatsu Sapphire, Gradius, Gradius 2, JJ and Jeff, Jaseken Necromancer, Lords of Thunder, Military Madness, Moto Rotor, Newtopia and Newtopia 2, New Adventure Island, Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Spirit, Parasol Stars, Power Golf, Psychosis, R-Type, Salamander, Spriggan, Snatcher, Soldier Blade, Space Harrier, Splatterhouse, Spriggan Mark II, Star Parodia, Super Darius, Super, Momo Mentaro Denditsu, Superstar Soldier, Valkyrie no Densetsu, Victory Run, and Ease Book 1 and 2. We can also sort the games from A to Z, Game Format, Release Date. Personally, I leave it at A to Z. Now when we choose a game here, we can see if it was a TurboGrafx CD game, or a Hue card, just the regular old TurboGrafx-16 format. And one of my favorite things about this whole interface here is how you load a game up. Military Madness is a Hue card. So we're going to go ahead and start this. And it gives us that awesome little animation. I personally really love that. If we press Select and Run, otherwise known as Select and Start, it'll bring us to the game menu. We have four slots per game. We can return a menu or resume game. So if I want to save this, I'm just going to go with slot one, saved it, and I can load it up anytime I need to. I'm going to return to the menu because I want to show you a TurboGrafx CD game loading. We're going to start up Lords of Thunder. Gives us the hue card. We also get the CD drive and the sound. And I know this doesn't help out gameplay, but it does make the whole experience a lot more enjoyable. Now I just want to get into a little bit of game testing. I'm going to test a few here. I did test a lot on the PC Engine and everything works great. Yes, you'll hear about the shimmer, but keep in mind, this is not original hardware. This is an emulation device for $99 with a ton of awesome games that are perfectly playable. So I've got five games to test here real quick. I'm using the Turbo Pad, the controller that came with the Turbo Graphics 16. Overall, I love the feel of this. The D-pad is great. Buttons feel spot on. And it's just a great controller. They've done an amazing job replicating the original. I mean, it feels just like the original Turbo Graphics 16 pad. As for input lag or input latency, personally, I don't notice any, but I do a lot of emulation on my channel and I've learned to compensate for it. I'm not as sensitive to it as some other people are, but if you really notice some lag with the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, my suggestion would be get on eBay or your favorite buy-sell trade app and buy an original PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16. You can pick up all the games or you could buy a flashcard with it. But for a $99 mini console that's loaded with awesome games, I think they really nailed the TurboGrafx-16 and the PC Engine. So in the end, I've already said it, I personally really think that these are worth $99. I'm more into the PC Engine version just because of the size, but the TurboGrafx-16 Mini is definitely an awesome option. And this is what's readily available right now in the US. Before I get out of here, I did want to do a quick teardown. I did a teardown on the PC Engine Mini, and I'm pretty sure we'll have the same internals here, but I just wanted to check. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this shell off. And it's super easy to get apart. There are seven screws on the bottom. Nothing's blocking them at all. They're little Phillips head screws. And it looks like we have the same exact board. This was manufactured by Hori. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of here and pull the shield off of it. And as you can see, there's a lot of wasted space in here. But like I mentioned, they had to get that shape right.
And I was pretty sure this was going to be the case, but we do have the same exact CPU, RAM, and storage as the PC Engine Mini. By the way, this is actually the same CPU that's used in the Genesis Mini. It's a Z7213 quad-core ARM CPU at 1.3 GHz. We also have 256 megabytes of RAM, but what makes this much different from the Genesis Mini is the 4 gigabytes of eMMC storage. We have a lot of storage in here, mainly because the CD base games that are on here are so big. So when this is hacked and they're working on it hard right now, we can remove those and we'll have a lot of storage for more games on this unit. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm a big fan of the TurboGrafx-16 Mini and the PC Engine Mini. If you're into the mini consoles or you just love TurboGrafx-16 games, this is a definite buy. I will leave links in the description. You will not be disappointed. And by the way, 8BitDo does have some wireless controllers and I'll have a review coming up on my channel very soon. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on any of these units, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.